Hey guys, my name is Jamin. This is my YouTube channel, PC Monkey, where I try to bring you a wide variety of do-it-yourself computer upgrade and repair videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Windows 10 onto your HP computer. To do that, I'm going to be using this Install Media USB that I created for free off of Microsoft's website. If you want to see how you can create yours for free, I've made a video of how to do it. You can see that video here. I'll also have the link below in the description. In order to create that USB, you're going to need another working computer and a USB. If you don't have those and you need to purchase it instead, there'll be a link here to my Amazon store. It'll give you some examples of items you can purchase. If you're purchasing it, make sure you get install media and not recovery media. Some sellers on sites like eBay and Amazon, sometimes they'll label it install media, but you cannot install Windows with recovery media. A couple quick things before we get started guys. First, please remember to like and share if this video was helpful. And if you enjoy computer tutorials like this, please remember to subscribe. Second and last thing, a quick shout out to my sponsor, NiceHash. NiceHash is the world's largest hash power marketplace. What that means for you is you can now rent out your computer's unused power online to people who mine cryptocurrency and they pay you for that in Bitcoin. It's a great way to start making some side money with no work. It's a great way to start dabbling in the world of crypto without risking an investment. You can check them out here or I'll fill you in more about them at the end of the video. So now let's get into the project. We're going to take our install media USB, whether you created it yourself or had to purchase it, and we're going to insert it into our HP computer. So we'll take our USB, we'll plug it into the USB port on the computer, then we'll hit the power button, start tapping on F9, With most HP computers, you're going to be hitting F9 like I did right after hitting power. Tap on it repeatedly. With some models, it may be a different key. With some HPs, it may even be the enter key. So if F9 doesn't work for you, try the other ones. Try enter. Look it up in your owner's manual. Google it. Or if you can't find the right key, leave me a comment and I can help you out. So after getting into your boot menu, you're going to scroll down to your USB option. You can either use your arrows, your mouse. Uh, your tab key sometimes. If you don't have the use of those things in BIOS, you may want to plug in a USB mouse and use that. Or if you have a touch screen like me, the touch screen should still work in this menu. So for me, my USB option is number two. I'm going to arrow down and I'm going to hit enter. That accesses my USB install media. So here's the first set of options that we're going to choose from during the install process. As a reminder guys, before this process starts, make sure your computer's plugged in. Uh, you don't want to lose battery power and have your computer shut off during the install process. It could mess up your progress and you may have to start it all over again. So make sure your computer's plugged in throughout this process. Another reminder, the options that I'm choosing may not be the best options for you. I'll try to call those out as we hit them, but depending on where you live or what you're using your computer for, your options may differ. So for me right now, English in the United States, these options are good for me. I'm going to hit next. And then in your next window, install now. Again, you can use your enter keys, your arrow keys. Hopefully you have the use of your mouse. If you don't, try a USB mouse. That should help. Um, or again, if you have a touch screen like I do, then you can click on the options using your touch screen. I'm just going to accept the terms and conditions. Hit next. Now we have two options, upgrade option, install windows and keep files, or the custom install windows only advanced. Most of the computers I work on here, they're going to be refurb computers. So I don't mind wiping everything, starting fresh, erasing all the data, and then reselling the computer. So for me, I'm going to choose a second option, the custom install option. If you're just doing an upgrade to repair some sort of operating system damage, or for whatever reason you don't want to wipe everything and you want to keep your files, you would choose the first option. Keep in mind, if you want to save your files, the best way to do that is to back them up before this install process. But if you, again, if you want to save your files, you would choose that first option. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that second option. And again, because I want to delete everything, I'm going to go through and delete each partition until they're all gone. If you wanted to save your files, you would not delete these partitions. So to delete them, I'm clicking on the first partition. I'm hitting the delete key and hitting OK. 
I'll click on the next partition, delete, OK. So now after deleting all the partitions, I'm left with unallocated space, which should roughly resemble the size of your hard drive or your solid state drive. After I've done that and I've selected it as where I want to install Windows, I'm going to hit next. And now it starts the install process. Your computer may have to restart several times, that's normal. So now we have some more options to choose here. At this point, depending on your computer, Cortana could start talking to you and you have the option of audibly saying yes or no to various options through the rest of the install process. If you don't want that, you can always hit the button in the bottom right and you can turn her off or mute her and you can proceed like I'm going to show you in, in this video. Also, at this point, it's a good idea to remove your USB from the port. If the computer has to restart at all from here on in, it could restart, see the install media USB, and think that it needs to install all over again, and the process will start from scratch. We've already been at this now for about 30 minutes, so you kind of don't want to lose that. In some computers, it may even be longer. So make sure your USB at this point is removed from your computer. So as mentioned before, your options may not be the same as mine. Just take them one at a time and make sure you're choosing the right option for you. My area is United States. I'm going to hit yes. Is this the right keyboard layout? I'm going to hit yes. Do you want to add a second keyboard layout? I'm going to choose no for now. Now it wants to connect me to a network. At this point, you have a couple options on how you want to proceed. First option is you sign on to your Wi-Fi network now and get internet access to help you finish the rest of the install. At that point, the computer is going to force you to either sign into your Microsoft account, or if you don't have one, you're going to have to create a Microsoft account. And in some computers, there's no way around it. You either do that or the install process does not move forward. If you don't have a Microsoft account and you don't want to create one, you can choose the option that I'm going to show you to proceed with the install with no internet. That will complete the install process without forcing you to sign into a Microsoft account. So as mentioned, I'm going to choose the option I don't have internet in the bottom left. It's going to double check with me and I'm going to confirm yes, I want to continue with no internet. Who's going to use this PC? Again, because this computer is for resale, I'm just going to put in HP. You can put in whatever you like. I'm going to hit next. If you want to create a password, this is where you do it. I'm going to skip this part and hit next. Another thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to unselect all these options. I don't like giving people data without being paid for it. I'm just a little weird like that. So I'm going to deselect everything and turn everything off. Um, again, you may choose to do something else. And then I'm going to accept. As far as getting more functionality from Cortana, I'm going to choose not now. And it's almost done. And here we are on the desktop. It's been a successful install of Windows. One thing I highly recommend after you've successfully installed Windows is to make sure your computer is fully updated. This is a brand new copy of Windows. You're going to need a lot of system updates, security updates, driver updates. All of those things are going to help your computer run smoother and faster right away. And if you don't install them right away, a lot of them will be installing in the background for hours or days, maybe even a couple weeks, and that'll slow your computer down. So the best thing to do now is if you have time, Run those all manually, make sure they're all done so they're not slowing you down in, in the future. I'll show you how to do that now. First thing to do with these updates is make sure your computer is hooked up to Wi-Fi. If you're one of those people that have already signed up to it during the install, you're all set. But if you were like me and completed the install without Wi-Fi, you want to hook up now. For those of you that have to hook up to Wi-Fi, you should be able to see the icon down here in the bottom right of your screen. If you don't see that and you can't click on it, we're going to go to your search bar in the bottom left and type in Wi-Fi. Up here you'll see Wi-Fi settings. We'll click on that. 
show available networks, and that's where you can grab your Wi-Fi. After you've connected to Wi-Fi, let's go grab the updates. We're going to go back to the bottom left of your screen to the search bar and type in updates. The best match here, check for updates under system settings, we'll click on that. Now in this screen, you'll either see a ton of updates start populating here and start automatically downloading, or you'll see this button, check for updates. If you see that button, then we'll click on it. As you can see here, a ton of updates have populated, um, 100%, 100%, 71%, and they're automatically starting to download. So the best way to make sure all your updates install correctly is to keep an eye on them for a little while. As they complete, they'll be replaced by other updates that were waiting for those updates to be processed first, and this process should go on for quite a while. Also, at multiple points, your computer may need to restart to finish installing certain updates. If that's the case, you'll see in the bottom right-hand corner a dialog box pop up that says Restart Required. You can click on that. Or at the right-hand side of your updates, it'll say Pending Restart. You can click on that. At different spots, your computer will need to restart to finish an update and proceed with the next one. That could happen several times. After you restart your computer, do this process again. Get on your desktop, type in updates to your search bar, and then click that button up top that says check for updates. And you do that over and over again until the updates are all installed. That's the video guys on how to install Windows 10 onto your HP computer. If this was helpful, again, please like and share. If you have any comments or questions, uh, check out the FAQs below in the description. It could save you some time getting an answer. If you don't see a question there, feel free to leave me a comment. I do try to address those a couple times a day at least. And now, as promised before, a few extra words on my sponsor, NiceHash. So as mentioned before, NiceHash is the world's largest hash power marketplace. What that means for you is you can now rent out your computer's unused and idle power online to crypto miners and you get paid for that power in Bitcoin. It is a great way to rent out your computer, make some money on the side without any work. And you can also start investigating the world of crypto without really risking any investment. You already own the computer. Most of us have computers far more powerful than we need day to day. And this is a great way to put that to work. You can use their research tools to research other cryptocurrencies, their exchange feature to trade for other cryptocurrencies. You can store your money on their wallets, and you can even try your own hand at mining by using their quick miner. So there's a lot of different resources there. You can check them out here. Leave me any questions or comments you have about them. I can try to help you out. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.